I have been primarily shooting on the Sony mirrorless system now for about a year and a half with my main body being the Sony a7 IV. One of my favorite things about being a Sony shooter has been the sheer amount of lens choice that you have like native lenses, lenses that don't require an adapter on the Sony system. So in this video, I wanted to share with you guys five of my favorite Sony E-mount lenses, some of the photos I've taken with those lenses and the reasons why I like them so much. So let's jump into it. Okay, so at number five is actually the lens that's filming me right now and that is the Sony 20 millimeter 1.8. When I was shooting on the Canon R6, I had a Sigma 20 millimeter 1.4 pretty much glued to the camera every time I was documenting things, traveling or talking to the camera like this. I just really like the look of the setup. And on top of that, I used to get a lot of compliments from people in the comment section asking me, wow, what lens are you using? It looks incredible. But the problem with that setup was while the 20 millimeter 1.4 is an amazing lens, it's heavy and it also requires an adapter which throws the balance off quite a lot. So it was a little bit uncomfortable to use. And this 20 millimeter 1.8 is kind of the opposite of that. It is very lightweight, very compact. It's super easy to travel with and the image quality is fantastic. You still get that really nice kind of blurry background as you can see here shooting wide open. I I just think it looks really nice. So the reason that it's at number five is because I don't really use it for photos that often, to be honest, it's more of a video lens for me. Okay, so at number four is the Tamron 70 to 180 2.8. So this is a 70 to 200 equivalent. It's almost there, it's missing a little bit of range on the long end, but it doesn't really matter too much. This is a really, really versatile lens for travel photography, even portrait photography. And I love that compressed look that you can get shooting all the way out at 180 millimeters. I think the biggest thing with this lens, and you're probably seeing a bit of a trend with my philosophy and approach towards gear, is yes, how compact it is and lightweight. And on top of that, the image quality is incredible one of the sharpest lenses in my bag. There is a disclaimer and kind of a reason why it's not higher up on my list and that has to do with the build quality. It is quite plasticky and I think one of the biggest kind of worries for me is over probably the last year of owning this lens, it has sucked quite a lot of dust in underneath the front element. It's probably because the lens barrel extends in and out and it's kind of prone to getting dust in there. It's just probably not sealed as well. And this kind of makes me a little bit worried, not about the dust because it doesn't really affect the image quality overall, but maybe like moisture getting in there over time and causing haze and fungus and things like that. But aside from that, I really still don't regret buying this lens. It has enabled me to get some really amazing shots, some of my favorite photos um, while I've been out traveling. And for the price of this lens as well, it is a shade of what you would pay for a Sony 70 to 200. It's really hard to beat for value for money. Number three, another Another lens from Tamron. This is the 17 to 28 2.8, and it's a very, very versatile wide angle lens. In the last year, I've taken some of my favorite landscape photos with this guy. Lightweight, compact, you know that's really important to me, and I've used this quite a lot more than my 70 to 180, and the build quality seems more solid. It's held up a lot better. Uh, this one is actually an internal zoom, so I don't know if you can see that, but the barrel does not extend when you zoom in and out, so we don't have any of those dust issues and this is great for photography extremely sharp all the way through the zoom range and it's a great video lens as well i know sigma have a very similar lens to this one as well which i actually have not tried out yet be very keen to try that one out as well but this has done the job for me for the most part i'm really happy with it so we're getting to the business end now and at number two this is the sigma 35 millimeter 1.4 dgdn 35 for me is one of my favorite prime focal lengths it's just really versatile. You can get in nice and close and get close up images without too much perspective distortion. And you can also get really nice wide angle documentary style photos while also having that 1.4 aperture, which gives you beautiful separation from the background and the ability to shoot in low light situations with ease. One of the other things I love about this lens is the amount of buttons and dials that it has on it. The Tamron lenses lack this, but it has an autofocus manual focus switch, the ability to click and de-click that aperture ring and also a lock on the aperture ring so you don't accidentally bump it and change your aperture while you're shooting which I really find helpful. While this lens is a little heavier than the others the build quality is really nice there's a lot of 
metal in the design and some weather sealing, as you can see on the mount. And I really just look at this lens like a workhorse, a lens that's just gonna get the job done for many, many years to come. Now, I did own the G Master 35 1.4 as well. No hate on that lens, it's an amazing lens. I think that they are so similar. You can barely tell the difference between them, some very minor differences. I've already made a video comparing the two, but I actually decided to keep the Sigma uh, move on from the G Master and because the GM is a little bit more expensive Take some of that money and use it to invest in other lenses and other gear that will make me a more versatile photographer and filmmaker All right, so before we hit up number one I do want to give an honorable mention to this lens right here, which has been glued to my camera recently I have been loving the Sigma 28 to 70 2.8 recently as kind of a do everything lens. I've been shooting portraits, landscapes, all kinds of stuff on this lens. And if I had to choose one lens to take with me, it'd probably be this one. It didn't make the top five because it's just not as special as these other lenses. And because this is a bit of a recent pickup for me, I don't really have as many beautiful photos to show you guys from this lens. However, I didn't want to make this list without mentioning this lens at least once. So 28 to 70, honorable mention. My all-time favorite lens for the Sony E-mount, this is the Sigma 24mm 1.4. And yeah, I totally get it. It's not as versatile as a 35mm. You get a lot more perspective distortion when you're trying to shoot close-ups. But I gotta say, I have just created some of my favorite photos with this lens over the last six months of using it. It shares a lot of similar features to the 35 1.4 with the click and de-click uh, the autofocus manual focus switch, but it also has another switch on it, which is a manual focus lock. So if you've got your focus set, you can actually lock it so that even if you spin the ring, it won't get bumped out of focus, which is really handy if you don't want your focus to move at all. Maybe you're shooting an interview or a static object or maybe some astrophotography. It's got this cool drop-in filter holder in the rear, even though I never use it. It's just a cool feature to have. And I think my favorite thing about it is just the unique look that you get with it. You got that really nice wide angle field of view coupled with that 1.4 aperture. And it's just a great documentary lens. It has a very interesting look to it. Photography, video, it doesn't matter. I just really love shooting with the 24. Do you guys agree or disagree with my picks for top Top five let me know what your favorite lens is if you are a Sony shooter down in the comments section below and if you like the way I edit my photos all of the photos in this video were edited with my Lightroom preset pack which you can find linked down in the description below so I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you all in the next one